In this demo, we'll take a look at GlueMesh 2.1 and the recently announced Glue platform. So with Glue platform, what we're focusing on is that next set of challenges and next journey that organizations need to take once they've gotten past the initial steps of modernization, adopting cloud technology, things like first few steps into public cloud, things like containers, Kubernetes. And what we find is that once they've deployed their applications, these applications need to communicate with each other. And how you provide that application networking on top of these various cloud technologies, whether that's on premises, in a public cloud, both or multiple clouds, we need to we need to solve the challenges around communication, around zero trust security, around API and service to service networking policies. And we need to do this in a way that scales to large deployments, multiple clusters, lots of different teams. And as I mentioned in this very heterogeneous environment. And so that's why we built Glue Platform. Glue Platform is a multi-layered approach that solves challenges at the edge with the API gateway, the only API gateway that's built directly on top of a service mesh. It doesn't force you to use a service mesh, it's optional. But if you happen to be going down this path, it, it natively ties in with, uh, with your service mesh so that you can have the same policies to describe networking and security for both north-south and east-west traffic. The second layer is Glue Mesh. And this is an enterprise service mesh that focuses on running a service mesh at scale, allowing various teams to onboard to it, the complex workflow, workflows that might um, you know, show up around it, centralized observability, zero trust properties, multi-tenancy, and, um, you know, tying in with, uh, with, with a various components that a large organization probably needs, like plot observability tools or private key and public key infrastructure. The last layer is Glue Network, which goes a layer deeper and tr uh, tries to provide defense in depth by controlling the lower layer CNI components in, in the network. And on top of this, we've also built GraphQL capabilities to be able to expose these APIs and orchestrate the, the data from these services. So as a recap, Glue Network forms the foundation of these lower layer networking concepts using things like Cilium, using eBPF. Glue Mesh provides an enterprise service mesh with uh, multi-cluster support, multi-tenancy support, advanced um, concepts, including sidecar or no sidecar deployments. Glue Gateway is our API gateway, which can be used to replace some of those bloated full stack, life, full lifecycle API management vendors with more lightweight, cloud-friendly gateway technology. In the demo that we'll take a look at today, we'll see a multi-cluster deployment. We'll see global routing and advanced failover. We'll see our API gateway in action, and we'll see how the lower layers of the network come into the picture as well. So we'll start by looking at the user interface. So we have two clusters in this demo. This is for simplicity of the demo, but you can add as, as, as many clusters as you need. And the first thing we'll notice is that we're able to discover what's running in those clusters. Here we have a cluster in US West. Here we have a cluster in US East. And we've discovered that we have Istio running in the clusters. This happens to be a solo supported version of Istio. Uh, we have full lifecycle management as well as CVE patching 
and uh, uh, production SLAs around uh, our builds of Istio, which are drop-in replacements for the open source project. The next thing we'll see is a concept called workspaces. Workspaces is a way to carve up the capabilities of the service mesh that you want to expose to different teams. Now, the sample application that we'll be using is the good old Istio book info demo, which you can see here. And a very big tenant of ours here at Solo is that our products should fit into these modern cloud native workflows. GitOps is at the heart of those workflows. So all of the configuration that drives the behavior of this platform, whether at the gateway level or at the mesh level, or the networking level should be done and should be driven through declarative configuration. And those should be stored in Git. And so in this demo, you'll see that we have our Git repo with the various policy objects that we will use to drive the behavior of the mesh. We also use Argo CD. And you can see that things are green here. We've synced everything into the various clusters and um, we will we'll be able to use automation to drive um, the, the behavior of this platform. So the first thing I'm going to take a look at is implementing a gateway, API gateway. Now, our glue gateway, as I've mentioned, can replace full stack or full lifecycle, rather, API management gateways um, with capabilities such as request transformation, rate limiting, OIDC integration, um, web application firewalling, and, and, and more. For this demo, I'm going to take a look at rate limiting. So the first thing we'll do is we come into our configuration. I'm going to drive this through a GitOps workflow. If we take a look at our rate limiting policy, what you'll notice in GlueMesh is that the way we configure our services and our behavior is slightly different than what you see in the Istio community. Now we can do it with Istio objects, but Istio objects are very service specific. You apply a policy to a specific service. With Glue Mesh, to manage a more wide scale, widely deployed set of services and, and application networking, what we do is we define policies and then use labels and selectors to apply those policies to various services. It's much more intuitive and much easier to handle at large scale. So in this case, what we're gonna, what we're gonna do here is we can see that this policy, this rate limit policy applies to routes that have this label, rate limited is true. So let's find a route and let's actually come in here and edit this route. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it labels but rate limited is true. So now whenever we call a product page in the book info demo, we will potentially be rate limited. Let's see, rate limit. We'll commit these changes, come back here, and we'll look at the client settings. What's that? Right here. And specifically, what we're, gonna, we're gonna be rate limiting on requests that come in with these specific headers x number and x type and if we see those requests we'll, re we'll rate limit them at one per minute all right so now if i come over here and um, check out our argo cd we'll see that we're out of sync so let's sync that new change that we just made in git to our our, our uh, platform and then we're going to actually use Postman because we can edit and alter the headers here when we when we use Postman. So if we send in requests, these don't, we're not going to enable these headers. We'll send in the requests. We should see we do get the HTML page back. It's the book info page. Now, if we enable these headers and send them in, we should see that approximately, it's not 100%, but approximately, uh, we'll see one, and we'll see two, oh, it's too many. So approximately one request per minute will trigger the rate limiting. 
Now under the covers, this is using the glue gateway. And glue gateway is built on top of Istio, Istio's ingress gateway. And it is in the glue, when you adopt the glue platform, you can choose to use this technology standalone. You don't have to use the full bone service mesh. You can just use the gateway if you want. So the next thing we'll take a look at is cross cluster traffic and failover. So if I come back to the web page here and I, I refresh a few times, we should see traffic is flowing back and forth to the review service, reviews V1 and V2. You know, if you're familiar with book info, there's no red stars, reviews V3 is not here. So this traffic happens to be pinned to cluster one at the moment. Cluster two is where we have reviews V3. So if we come over to our, our clusters here and we find front ends in cluster one, let's go find deploy. And let's just take the product page down in cluster one. What we'll see is come back and refresh, cross fingers, we should see the traffic still continues and eventually we should see red stars because now we are failing over automatically into the second cluster. And this failover behavior is handled by Glue Mesh. There is a concept in Glue Mesh called virtual destination, which allows you to specify a global name, a globally routable name that can then use priority and locality as a failover mechanism. So whenever you talk to product page dot whatever in the mesh, it will automatically be routed to the, the correct service. So from a observability standpoint, we can see using our graph that traffic does indeed fail over between cluster one and cluster two. And, and we can we can move things around a little bit. Things should redraw. See here, if we click on the Istio Ingress Gateway, click on product page, we can see uh, the amount of traffic that is coming through those, uh, those various gateways. Another thing that's uh, interesting about Glue Mesh 2.1 and Glue Platform is the ability to manage the life cycle of Istio itself. So across a large number of clusters, it can be very difficult to automate and control the upgrading process and the management of a particular version of Istio um, for, from a single location or any location. So what we have in, in Glue Mesh is the, is the ability to, uh, let's see, do I have the, uh, the ability to install and deploy lifecycle managers from a single point of view, which then allows to control what Istio versions get installed across a fleet of clusters. And we can automate how we upgrade those, those Istio control planes and data planes um, across the fleet. Now, lastly, what I'm gonna cover here is um, the, the defense and depth capabilities. So as we mentioned, you can optionally, so Glue Gateway can run standalone, Glue Mesh can run standalone, or they can run together with Glue Gateway. And then Glue Network can run standalone or with the mesh and the gateway together. And what the networking component provides is functionality that can be built into eBPF and leveraged from the CNI. In this case, we've discovered that Cilium happens to be running in these clusters. Now we can also take a look at the health of each of these um, various components deployed in here. We can see that we have uh, Cilium in a good state. We have Istio in a, in a healthy state. And now if I deploy a glue mesh access policy that 
states that product page can or cannot talk to the review service. What we want to see happening when we use Glue Network is defense in depth. We want the Istio authorization policies to be written, but we also want the networking policies to be written so that at layer seven and layer three and four, that, that networking is, is controlled by, uh, by access rules. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come over to the policies page, the debug page, and we'll take a look at any authorization policies, but, but we don't have any. Maybe we'll also add some Cilium network policies. Again, we don't, we don't have any. But in, in Glue Mesh, what I want to do is I want to apply an access policy to Glue Mesh to, the, the, to control the traffic between product page and reviews. So when I do that, what we should see is that Glue Mesh will automatically go create the correct authorization policies for Istio and the correct Cilium network policies for the lower layer networking. So that if I come over here into my cluster and find a, an application uh, in, in one of these namespaces here, let's just, let's just execute into, into this. And if we try to uh, curl the reviews the info back ends, uh, 9080. What we'll see is it hangs. It hangs because only product page can talk to the review service. Other applications cannot, and this is being blocked at the network level. Now, if we could somehow circumvent the network level, maybe, you know, since the, the rule allows us to talk from the product page, oop, we don't have any, let's put that back. From the product page, we should be able to talk to the, the review service. But what if I don't call it using Istio's mutual TLS mechanism? What if I call it directly from the proxy? If I were to, if, if I were to do that, curl, let's, what is it, reviews.bookinfo. Reviews one. We should see that the connection will fail because the mutual TLS that was expected isn't isn't provided. Now, if we were to call this from product page directly, then the call would succeed because that's that's what we've written the authorization policies for. Now, I invite you to take a look at the Glue platform and to take a look at the glue mesh 2.1 release. There's a lot of stuff in, in there that I, I'm not able to cover and but we will create uh, smaller demos to, to walk you through. Things like the Istio lifecycle management, things like eBPF acceleration for Istio is now in, uh, in, in glue mesh 2.1. Um, and integrating with Cilium and with network policies from your CNI to give a much tighter control over the uh, security and uh, the network policies in your multi-cluster heterogeneous deployments. So again, take a look at uh, Glue Mesh and Glue Portal, and thanks for stopping by this demo.